Good. Um, it's uh, good to see everybody again. I guess the first order of business is to welcome our newest member, Joanne. I understand you've been sworn in and you're all, all good to go. So uh, welcome to the board. Uh, we appreciate uh, David's uh, service uh, in the past, obviously. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's obviously a time and away from family and other items, things we'd like to do. So uh, we, we do appreciate that. We made him work right to the bitter end. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Quite the <laughs> um, I'd, I'd also like to thank Diane and the rest of the board for kind of carrying the, the water as it, as it were um, when I was uh, out on vacation last uh, last month. So I know that's a, it's, it's a lot to kind of make that adjustment. Okay, so that being said, let's call this meeting to order uh, and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. All right. Our first agenda item is uh, public speak. Do we have any speak from the public? I don't see any members of the public other than uh, Eric and Sherry. All by ourselves. Yeah, I know that's unusual, <laughs> right? That's haven't had that happen in a long time. <laughs> I wonder why. Back to normal. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, it's not budget season. No. Don't normal would be meeting in normal. person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, fair. I wouldn't be there though if we had to be in person. I got a kid. I can't. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, having those public speak, let's move on to agenda item number three, which is additions and deletions of the agenda items. Does anybody have any additions or changes to the agenda they'd like to propose? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to the town administrator's report. Um, Eric, the floor is yours. Okay, let me just share my screen real quick. Uh, hopefully this works. Seems to be. Yep. Okay, so th this is gonna be pretty brief. Um, just so that you all know, I will not be here next week. So if you need to get a hold of me, I guess that's too bad. Um, <laughs> the, the auditor is starting on the uh, audit. Um, he was in at the, on the Board of Ed side yesterday. It's gonna be oh, in- today. What? He was in today. I mean, all right, today. And tomorrow he will be in the town hall. Um, so we're hoping to get a jump on it and not be pushing it all the way up to the end of the one fiscal year to complete the, the uh, audit for the previous, previous year. Um, so we are going to have to create a couple of new funds fairly quickly. Um, one is the Community Connectivity Fund. That is because we should be receiving the grant money for that one shortly. Um, and we need to uh, create a standalone fund to account for it. Um, the second is we're gonna need a, a standalone fund for the American Rescue Plan uh, money. And the third one is the Board of Selectmen have asked you to set up a standalone recreation fund because they were unhappy that in the past, some monies had just been rolled into the general fund that had been allocated specifically for recreation. There were mainly donations from clubs and that monies ended up getting rolled into the general fund and then, you know, kind of lost for the original purposes it was donated. Um, the other thing I wanted to say real quick is there are gonna be some minor staffing changes I've asked the Board of Selectmen for permission to add one extra hour for the building department, for the building official, and then uh, go back to what the town used to do up to a couple of years ago, which is have the person that takes minutes for all the land use agencies work a couple hours a week, Monday nights, to help out getting all the legal notices and dotting the T's and crossing the I's for the land use, the zoning agent and the wetlands agent and helping out zoning board of appeal. Um, total those two things will add about $5,500 in cost. Um, it's my intention to pay for that out of 
the rebate check we got from Kerma. So those two should balance each other out. The Board of Selectmen have, have basically said they'd be okay with me doing it if I can show how I'm gonna pay for it. So that would be my suggestion on how we pay for it. Um, the Board of Selectmen has also asked that we hire a custodian for five to 10 hours a week um, to deal with collectively all the town buildings, you know, minor repairs and then maintenance. Um, because that's not a budgeted expense, the only place we can really take that out of is the building maintenance fund. Um, so that is going to deplete a reasonable portion of that fund and it's going to make it more difficult to do some of the bigger items, but they hope to accomplish a lot of the little items. So I don't think that's something we actually need action on the Board of Finance. I'm just letting you know that that is... Uh, that is in the works that will be discussed again at the next Board of Selectmen meeting. As many of you know, we had a storm. Um, we suffered some pretty significant <clears throat> and washouts. Um, we've run probably about $4,000 in material costs we weren't really anticipating um, because of that, just because we've had to buy an awful lot of process, an awful lot of stone, and an awful lot of loam to repair all the washouts in the town roads. So we've expended about 4,000 in materials we weren't really anticipating. Um, and ultimately we're gonna spend, you know, three to $5,000 in repair, repairs to the Andover ball field. Um, some of that we're gonna owe as extra fees to the maintenance contractor that we work there, which is Hebron Parks and Rec. And then some of that we're gonna to need to repair the fencing. Um, we had an initial estimate from that that was a lot higher than I really wanted to pay. So we kind of scaled back what we wanna do um, you know, to that. Um, so to try to make it basically functional, look reasonably aesthetic and re repair the existing fencing. Um, so, so, you know, at this point, we're okay funding wise for that, but I'm just letting you know that that has occurred and that's something we didn't really uh, plan for um, in the beginning. Um, at this point, we are finished with crack sealing um, and shimming roads. Shimming is just putting a very uh, thin layer of asphalt on problem spots for the year. Um, we've expended pretty much everything we budgeted for that. We put down a little over a thousand tons uh, of asphalt total. Um, and right now we are chip sealing roads. That should all be done in the next three days. Um, we should be done with chip sealing for the year. That's a fairly quick process. After that, we're gonna be switching to drainage projects um, and then more tree work. Um, and we are actively working on cost sharing some of that with Eversource where appropriate. And uh, actually Jay and I were on the news tonight um, with uh, NBC 30 News discussing that and uh, you know, some of the problems with tree work um, in collaboration with the utility company. And that's basically all I have unless you all have questions for me. I know this is a pretty abbreviated report for me but uh, it's July. Questions for Eric? <clears throat> I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Eric. <clears throat> Finance department report is our next agenda item. Gary, you're muted. Okay. In your packets, you have the town budget summary as of um, the other day. Uh, we are still taking in last minute bills. It's not the final budget summary. So we're still working on getting everything together so we can finally close out the fiscal year 2021. Also in the packet is the revenue summary all the revenue with the exception of the taxes, the last May and 
June at this point when I gave you the report. They were not recorded. They are recorded as of right now. So all the taxes that we've collected this year are reported on that report. Um, the TAR aid wrote, town aid wrote, excuse me, uh, spending uh, detailed sheet is was also in the packet for your review. And uh, D on this uh, agenda, over expenditure report, I anticipate another um, one when I finalize the budget accounts uh, on the report that will be covering more accounts um, as we finalize the fiscal year 2021. So I'll have that probably in August for you, for sure. And uh, I just have two questions when I'm looking at this that just some figures that just popped out for me. And I don't know if it's just the way the numbers are hitting. But I noticed that in the Old Town Cemetery, it's like at 300% over. And it was a big increase year to date expend over what we budgeted. I don't remember having a discussion that we were going over on that budget. And I don't know what that was. Okay, I can okay. check it out. And then the Board of Ed line item in there. Yes. 180K over what the budget yep. is. I'm it glad you brought that out. Uh, yes. It is not that. Okay. We have not finalized their figures yet. Okay. We just cut a check for a total of $385,000 to pay back the town for the payroll um, for the grants and for food service. Oh, okay. So okay. We'll be depositing that check. Matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, Marina's going to put that check in the bank and then we'll make that entry and that will true up the amount where the board of that uh, is truly a, is at. Right, because they're not over budget. No, them. they are not. not. Absolutely okay. not. Absolutely right, so. not. And matter of fact, we were working on uh, reconciling both the town and the board uh together so we will have that figure finalized when we close out the report just and the old town summer it's not a lot of money but it still just showed up as a big i think it's yeah, yeah I'll, I'll check into it you know i just thought some of this i don't have the history on so i okay, just have yeah. to ask some questions I'm doing a lot of work in that cemetery so i don't know if something went over or not Okay. Diane, what line item are you talking? It's the old town. It's the old cemetery down on Cider Mill there. I think that's what it was. I think we budgeted like 3000 and it came in at 6000 Yeah. You know, 1-103-0355, if I can read the scan correctly, but yeah. It just stuck out because it's like 300% yeah. over budget or something. Oh, that's a good okay. one to look at. I think... Well, it's a round number, six thousand, which is kind of odd too. No yeah, so I, I think the the issue with that is that um, we actually spend that every year. I think it's just the way we book it because we get a specific grant every year uh, that I sign for for the old cemetery, which uh, allows us to fix up the old headstones which I believe is the total dollar value of $3,000. So I suspect you're seeing what we budget plus we booked the expense to that and not a grant would be my guess, but I would have to actually look before I said that definitively. So that's going, you know, for what? So going forward in this next budget year, I just want to make sure that we're all in agreement that we are going to show all revenue sources, every freaking grant that comes into this town, we should have in. Yeah. Um, the auditor will be working with me tomorrow at the town. And there's a number of funds and accounts that we need to set up and so get them properly awesome. classified in the audit report. I talked to him today at great length. He says, I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I said, well, this is what we got to do. And he goes, you're absolutely right. We got to do this. So I said, Can I carve out some time to straighten this whole mess out? Because I don't like this, all these liability accounts here. Because I know they're not liability accounts. So 
he suggests he is suggesting setting up separate funds and then taking those funds and bringing in the revenue and then bringing the expenditures. So you have revenue on one side, expenditures on the other, and then it creates a balance for each of the funds. Yeah. So that's what we properly should set that up as, and we're gonna take care of that, definitely. Yeah. Also, I discovered today that we did receive the American um, Rescue Relief money in okay. on June 22nd, we have 478,000 and change. I can get you an exact number, but um, I was going over what revenues we have received thus far uh, through the June 30th with the auditor and it came up that, yeah, we did in fact receive it. We double checked it, it's in our bank account. So, and he also indicated to us that um, any interest that we earn based on that amount of money, we can certainly keep. So it'll be as income as well. I mean, that's half of what our appropriation is. Right. Right. So that's good news. And, and to at least say that we've got the money. So now all we got to do is figure out how to spend it. That's all. Bottom line. So I think overall, I wanna say I, I feel pretty good about the finances on both sides, town and board of ed. And today, after talking to the auditor, that's the feeling I got that we're not so far off and we're not so bad on the town side. So. I'm just giving you a little piece of information. It's, it's looking good. You know, we're making progress. We're doing things the right way we're supposed to be doing them. And I think with this audit cycle right here, we'll clean everything up, address the issues that um, he put in the management letter. And um, we'll move forward to getting an audit report sooner than what has been done in the past for for sure hey. yeah right, right. <laughs> yeah so i uh, i would i was in despair believe me but um, <laughs> now i'm not <laughs> uh, I, so do you think that like, part uphill we're getting you, there. i will tell you to me it's shocking to see the auditor already on site you know, in the yeah. of July, I'm used to seeing the guy I, in I December, told you. January, November, yeah, December. Yeah. One thing I told you when you interviewed me, I said there will be an audit, and there will be an audit done properly, and when it's supposed to be delivered, which is customary to having one done by December 31st for sure, and that's what OPM wants, and that's what they're gonna get. Uh, just, you know, okay. there's no ifs, ands, buts about that. And he did a lot of work, uh, preliminary work today at the Board of Ed, which was good. And he'll be there tomorrow to do preliminary work. And then they'll loop back in another week or so when we pull the test um, documents, like all the receipts that he wants to test and um, AP that he wants to test. So they'll come back and they'll review all that piece of it. And um, he asked me how soon did I think I was gonna close out. And I told him as soon as I can would probably be about the first week of August, I'm hoping. Right. So Jerry, you think it reasonable to think that, you know, come our next meeting, all these things will be nailed down? Yes, yes, uh, that's where my goal was to make sure that that we have all this wrapped up um right now what i've got to do is i've got to get going on the efs uh which is the big year-end financial report that is due uh for the school uh by september 1st so i'm compiling those records right now and getting that together and that i will be working on that uh very heavily over the next few weeks to get that done. So I just wanted to bring you up to speed on, on what's going on. There's a lot going on. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Sherry. Well done, of, I, I think. A yeah. lot of moving parts, a lot of plates spinning, and they continue to spin. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be, we'll be happy we get an audit in on time. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the last time we pulled that off. So, <laughs> well, I am going to intend to do that this year. So that's it. You know, when you think about it historically, it was not that long ago, you know, when we were three years behind on auditing the town. Um, yeah. That's what you told me. Right. Yeah. So, so we're making progress. Okay. We are. All right. I have uh, just one little bit of information kind of related to the budget. I emailed all the members of the, the Board of Finance just before the meeting, uh, so you wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, but uh, we have a letter pending from the Board of Ed requesting uh, that we allow them to roll the up to 2% of any uh, excess funds. They said they look like they're going to have some unexpected excess funds estimated at about 50,000. Yes. Uh, so it's not the full, full 2%, but they asked if we could roll that into the, the uh, non-lapsing school improvement fund. Um, I think there's a lot to talk about there. I suggest we not take that up at this meeting, but we set it up for new business on the next meeting agenda. Yeah. Um, once we get the official letter, but I did forward the, the draft that Jerry Creme sent to me. So you, you mm -hmm. have it and you can consider that for the next meeting. At the last meeting, at the last Board of Ed meeting, it was suggested by Adrian that we um, ask the Board of Finance to do that. They may not do it, he said, and I agree, he may not do it, but I, I think it's uh, prudent to for us to move forward and ask for it, at least. Um, and it's certainly a good place um, to be putting those funds in, in case or the unlikely expense that we come up with if it's, you know, septic or whatever it is, you know, we, we have the money there, you know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. So I think next time when we discuss this, it would be helpful to know what that fund balance is and kind of what the options are where there may be restrictions on where that ends up being spent. So I think that that's, yeah. you know, we've talked about this before every year this comes up. So just a, just a refresher on all that. So. Well, it does have to be spent on educational purposes for sure. sure. Yeah. Right. It's a building improvement fund. Did you say? School improvement fund is, I think it was. School it's improvement. Title. Okay. So you know, I guess some of the things Jerry listed in his email, you know, to me, I'm, I'm not sure what school improvement, you know, to me, I always thought of that as building and facilities type thing, but it, Maybe that doesn't limit it to that. I don't know. I, I guess I can I give a lot changed on that. I think it could be used for educational purposes. I don't think it's just limited to school. And yeah. Yes. Yes. I know. That's, That's correct. correct. The law was changed several years ago, and the change was basically it went from a maximum of 1% to a maximum of 2%. 2%. Right, and I remember then that. It really opened up the spending categories to make it very, so that it could be spent on any educational need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so if we were to look back at prior years before that, what we've spent it on, it doesn't really, ma doesn't really matter because it's been changed. No. So we right. don't want to look because I was that was my next question is like what have we done with it in the past? But if, if it's relatively recently, that's not really going to help us. Right. Well, especially if they've opened it up that much. Okay, so that's just a little informational point, um, and we'll plan for that next meeting as new business. Okay. I think. Um, does I anybody have, a question have any for questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm just curious where, um, what fund or. What investment did you put that money in, the grant money that came in, Sherry? Um, we haven't yet. As you, uh, Eric has asked that the Board of Finance uh, approve one of the three funds there. We have to create um, one. Yeah, there's yeah. a fund there to the fund. that. Yeah. We do have we, to create it. Do we look at that generally as to see what, you know, the best bang for your buck? Or is it a general type of, you know, a norm that you normally set up 
a fun Our friends type bank money. should have so like a grant. Area that will help us out invest that money prudently. We shouldn't be getting 0.1% on it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, you bring up a thing that's been bugging me for years, Diane. We should be getting <laughs> a little bit more money because of the dollar amount of it. But with respect to this particular tranche of money, I don't think that's the point right now. I think the point is that we need to alloc- We need to create a fund just so we can right. allocate it and earmark it properly. On the GL Crack side. Correct. Right. But, right. You know, when it comes to our general fund money and how it's you know, what it's earning, that's something I'd like to come back to. And Diane here is our resident expert. So um, I want to have that conversation again, but I don't think with this, with this one, it's just literally, we don't have a place no, to it. We just need a, a fund approved so that when we deposit it tomorrow, that we can book it in that fund. That's right. right. And then move forward with um, right. deciding what to do, what to spend it on and that kind of thing. So. We create a place for it to live. And then the board of selectmen um, mm-hmm. figures out what they want to do with it and in consultation Correct. with us right. and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Okay. So it so it has to be like a liquid fund. Yes. You can't you can't do anything with it. Do you know what I mean? We should not be taking market risk with it. You know, we're right. not gonna right. take no. Money, but no, no market risk, but we should get more than a regular all checking account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which gets nothing. <laughs> give me my give me my point five percent, damn it. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Any other <laughs> questions for Sherry on the uh, report? I'm good. Thanks, Sherry. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, Sherry. Well done. Um, so, we do we have we don't appear to have any budget transfers or over expenditure requests for this month, or do we? No. Okay. We do not. And, and and you won't until I finally close it. Yeah, it. Okay. Got it. Okay, we'll move on to agenda item seven, which is old business. Seven A is the software transition. Um, part of that is the we have the new chart of accounts draft. I know mm-hmm. that Diane had said that she had some questions on that. Uh, Sherry's included a draft of those chart of accounts in with our packet. Correct. Um, and I just merely yeah. gave that as a listing of chart of accounts to let you know that it's actually in the new system. And there have been accounts that have been deleted that are no longer necessary. There have been other accounts that have been converted into the proper expenditure categories that OPM is looking for. And um, this by no means is set in stone. There are gonna be other accounts that are going to be added um, as we go along. Um, So, I just felt that you should know that we're really doing well with the software transition. We're using it <laughs> and it's um, very user-friendly. We've processed checks so far. We've um, done deposits. We've done purchase orders and journal entries. And I'm now putting the budget into the system. Um, via a Excel spreadsheet that was generated by the system and, and kicked out into Excel. So I'm doing that right now. And I also talked to Eric, our um, point person on Edmonds Golf Tech. He's been very helpful and, and he's very good because he's an accountant. Um, and he has a CPA background. So him and I kind of talk the same language, which is excellent. We, he, he knows his accounting and I'm grateful for that because he's been giving us some good advice and tips. And we say, oh, how do we do this? Or how do we do that? And he's right on it. So I feel comfortable with um, that whole piece. We're working on the reporting right now to get out a report, a financial report, where it shows all the uh, the budget and the expenditures and any encumbrances that we have and, um, and the balance. So that's what we're working on right now. Got a question on the reporting, how, when we see things like budgets or, or I guess when we have financial reports, we just report the budget. 
we don't typically report to the previous year, but that is going to be a little bit of a challenge when we're trying to compare year over year budget, I think next year, probably correct. Um, close the system in the budget preparation system, um, uh, module, it does give you um, a column where you put in your previous budget and where you expended uh, what your final numbers were. There's a column for that as well. Okay. So you can compare. You'll have to map spent it last year. Yes, we can, even though the accounts. Yeah, and and what you do is you build it in the in the budget preparation module, which okay. I think is a nice real tool, and it produces all kinds of reports that you can rely upon to um, forecast what you want to. Uh, expand, you know, used as an expenditure moving forward. And it gives you the history from the fiscal year before. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what we were talking about. This is the history. And yeah. being able to show, yeah. you know, year to year, if we're changing the funds, we have to be kind of clear about, because people get confused. It's, it's easy to get yeah. confused when you look at a large spreadsheet and well, we've switched up where things go. Right. Um, I will be producing a cross box that will take us from our old accounts to our new accounts. Okay. Um, also, uh, there'll be an instructional piece with the reporting once I establish what that looks like and what that is, so that you actually go from your old reporting format to your new reporting format. And then we have questions and and we can answer those questions and then we can build on that based on our questions if we need it tweaked or we done a different way that's fine there's no problem with that the system is allowed allowing us to do just that um so i think it's going to be a work in progress and to say okay is this the report that you like if you don't like it tell me what you don't like about it unless you know uh, work on it to perfect it. Will you be able to develop? Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Diane. Go ahead. Will you be able to develop for us like a cheat sheet? I'm interested in knowing a cheat sheet of the GL account numbers so I know what department number and object and what they all mean and what goes in that account. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I say the numbers, but the numbers mean nothing to me. You can't really always realize the descriptors because you have to abbreviate it so much. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Uh -huh. so looking some kind of roadmap or cheat sheet that will give me a grid that says, right. This, these are our department numbers. Here's the, you know, there is a listing. Okay. That you can call up for anything. You can call up department numbers. You can call up um, object code numbers and what they mean. Um, you can take basically the chart of accounts, the way it's strung together in okay. the account. And you can break it down piece by piece. Okay. And it'll give you all your object codes. And then it'll give you all your department codes. And then it'll give you all your functionality codes, which are, you know, basically what you use this particular account for. You know, um, definitely we can produce those listings. It's not a problem. It's helpful when we're reviewing the sheets. Uh, one other question I had is when I was quickly looking at that chart of accounts, this past year's budget, we broke out employee benefits by department. Yep. And I didn't know if it needed separate accounts in there or if that's done behind the scenes. I was expecting to see accounts. No, they're, they're going benefits. to be, remember that I told you we we're going to add new accounts. Okay, so you're going to add those. Okay. okay. So right. there are going to be a series of new accounts added. In particular, it is in the insurance area. Okay. Um, also, I thought another one today was Spiker and Medicare could be broken out too by department. Yeah. Be. Have that. I'll, you I'll know, have that. anything to do with insurance related, related medical, right. dental, life, whatever. Everything. Um, yeah. So we can break it out by departments. So yeah. And my contention was don't bring those accounts over but create them as we're setting things up in the budget okay you know and and taking that big spreadsheet that we have that's approved and creating the accounts that way okay 
and putting the budget in there firsthand. And one other thing, when I was looking at that account really quick, and I so this probably answers the question for to add new accounts. I didn't see the the fund account for the community center in there. I saw like the fire department and things like that. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. if that's, that's another. Just, that's another cost. department, if you would, that we'd have to create or fund. Those are the kind of questions that I have for the auditor, how he wants to see that put on the financial statements, okay. you know, whether it be a fund or whether it be designated as a department. Okay. So those are the kind of things we're going to straighten out tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. I, that's all I have for questions quickly on that. Cause I know it's a preliminary list. So yes, yeah. it is. And once I finalize that, I will um, produce a, a document that you will have to see all the different accounts. Plus, you'll see it on the reports that we generate as well. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Sherry on these on the account structure or the software transition in general? I just had a quick question for Sherry, just to follow up on what um, Diane was asking. So Sherry, basically the department numbers are say like the 109 is a department number for the treasury, just because I'm looking at what was used before. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You know, I, that, that's yeah. your department number because I printed your chart of accounts and I'm familiar. Yeah. And then the uh, objects are like the 200s, the 300s. Yeah, the 100 codes are like your salaries. The language she's asking too, right? Yeah, two hundred codes of benefits, yeah. that kind of thing. Right. You follow, you follow the same account code that the schools follow, basically. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's why it made sense to me when I saw mm -hmm. it. Um, and are you happy? You seem happy with the new system. Oh yeah, very happy. Um, I've used a a good number of financial software systems. Mm -hmm. and um, Munis, to name one, and Infinite Visions were mm -hmm. very um, high sophisticated software mm -hmm. uh, applications. So, um, and then I used Phoenix before. It's in between a Munis and a Phoenix. So it's not bad. It's, it's a step up for sure. Yeah. And um, it's pretty user friendly and exactly what you used of the way you did things in Munis or in Infinite Visions are pretty much the same in mm -hmm. GovTech. So um, I'm very happy with it actually. Um, I was a little nervous at first, but it's going well. And even uh, my assistant said that she's finding it very easy as well. That so. was my next question because I know you must have so much work. I know what this entails, everything you yeah. do. Are you in Marina? I mean, I know that's a new department. You guys are hand in hand, like at the training, well, or are you kind of off and doing? We're working you? very well together, and we have a help desk trainer that we can call, no cost to uh, the town or the board of ed to ask our questions and what um we need to know we put that on uh we put him on speakerphone yeah. and we're both there listening yeah, to whatever right. it is so that way um we can be back up for one another whether it be payroll or related like prime pay we have prime pay on both sides i'll be a backup for that um as well and then now with the ap system uh, being GovTech, I'll be backing her up on that as well, and she will back me up on the uh, journal entries and things like that that need to get done. So we feel pretty confident that between the two of us, we ought to be able to keep up on it. And yeah, it's nice to have the two of you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really move forward. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Sherry? Okay, thank you, Sherry. Um, 
Next agenda item is the audit business, uh, or old business is the audit status, rather. We already talked about that. Do you have any other uh, data on that, Sherry? Any other? Well, um, he has the audit um, books with him done to be handed out, and he would like to know when um, he can come before the Board of Finance and do a presentation. We had talked today to him and Eric um, talked to him as well. And we were thinking maybe in August, it might be a good time to do that. Um, but we don't know what, how you feel about that. And you know, I, I would agree with that. We tend not to be you know, super busy with a lot of uh, business. We have some things we have to discuss, obviously, but we could certainly work him in as the first agenda item and then kind of yeah. uh, cut him loose. And so he's not waiting around for anything else. Um, other board members, you get any input on that? That makes sense. Okay. So I can let him know tomorrow that he yeah. can plan on coming to the next meeting uh, in August. Yeah. The Board of Finance. Okay. Yeah. And then we can get that set up in uh, on the calendar and yeah. on the agenda. So that would be August twenty fifth at seven p.m. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Right. I'll be good. Okay. Uh, next item is under his old business is 7C, which is the Community Senior Center Building Committee. Um, so I guess, Diane, you have anything you're working on that typically, right? Uh, you know? Eric got the, the RFP got out there. We've got a bunch of bids that came in. So they're being looked at now. So, and that's kind of where we are. So once we look, that's for the site work and the site engineering work. And then once we get that, then things will start moving along. Okay, good. Sounds like progress. Yeah. Anybody progress. have any questions or additional? How many bits we have? Four or five, Eric? We got four or five in? Uh, in the end, we got four bids in. We signed cool. up with five, but one contractor did not actually submit a bid. Well, at least it wasn't just two. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's good. That's good response during a time the contractors are often pretty busy. So. Right. Oh. Pretty reasonable, I think. Okay. Um, nothing else on that. Let's move to the next item, which is 7D, the Veterans Monument Park updates. I think we've all probably physically seen, if you've driven by, you've seen the physical changes there. It looks good. In fact, uh, a guy who works for me lives out in uh, Chaplin. He commented how nice it looks when he, when he drives by. So that's my only input. Anybody have any other comments? Or Eric, do you have any update on that? Uh, no, we're still trying to set up a combination meeting with our electrician and the contractor that's going to be installing the sprinkler systems. Um, we'd hope to do that tomorrow, but that does not appear to be uh, going to happen. Um, so, but we're plugging along. Um, Jerry is actually still fundraising. Um, he would like to add one additional monument down there called the Soldier's Cross, um, but that has to go before the Board of Selectmen. They're the, the governing body that makes that determination, yay or nay. Um, but we basically have a sprinkler system, a bunch of electrical work to do, um, and we have the uh, money that was left over from the COVID relief funds that the Board of Selectmen dedicated to that purpose. Um, and I believe, Sherry, that that just got rolled into the uh, building improvement fund. Am I correct? So that it was spendable from that. Correct. Yeah. So that money is still available in this fiscal year to deal with that. Um, so we should be, it shouldn't take additional Board of Finance input. Um, for that. Okay, good. Anybody have any additional input or questions? Okay, item 7E is the Building and Land Use Department online permitting system. Okay, so that with a little luck will go online on August 9th. Um, finally, it's been delayed, you know, a couple of months. Um, but we're, we're at the point where we're about to roll it out. Um, and so that you know the way that works is we're paying for that by simply adding 
a fee to every building permit that gets applied for that gets rolled back to the contractor um, in exchange for them providing the software and support to the town. So, you know, the Board of Finance or the Board of Selectmen has wanted to go this way, but I presented them several options in the past that they would have had to budget for um, and spend money and they didn't want to do it. They wanted it for free. Um, well, we can't actually get it for free, but we basically done it in such a way that um, it's, it's, you know, paid for directly by whoever's doing the application. So it's cost neutral to the town. And I think you pointed out before that that's really in line with what many towns, if not most, are doing in the area in Connecticut, right? Correct. Correct. So, yeah, we're there are not too many towns left that do not have an online permitting system um, for public works. Well, and our fee structure is not out of whack totally either. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, in fact, when we were going over it, you know, in putting in our fee structure into permit link, um, the guy commented, there's a number of areas where, um, like for instance, for stuff related to zoning that he said, you know, we're still, you know, kind of undercharging compared to most, you know, what most people do. So we will revisit that at some point in the future, but at least we'll be able to get it in and up and running and we can adjust fees as we need as because it's really the board of selectmen has to approve any fee changes for that. Sure. Okay. Other questions for Eric on that? Okay, let's move on to item 7F, which is the affordable housing plan RFQ. You got a sheet in your packet on that. Right, so we've sent out an RFQ uh, for a, uh, a planner to help the town develop an affordable housing plan. At the same time, we wrote a grant, which we are more than likely going to get uh, to fund it. Um, if we don't get the grant um, and you know the RFQ comes due about the time that we'll know one way or the other whether we got the grant. So we'll just hold off on evaluating. We're not under obli any obligation to go with any RFQ if, if the uh, grant does not come through. Um, however, we would need to spend some money because we are legally obligated to have an affordable housing plan in place by I believe next June. So there is some money left over um, from the last grant the town got for studying affordable housing, which I wrote like 10 years ago, there's still $2,500 in that account that's available. And we would probably have to take some money out of the fund uh, dedicated to the plan of conservation and development, uh, you know, the 10 year POCD fund. Um, to do that. Now, the affordable housing plan will be part of and is required to be part of the POCD. So, um, and as many of you, some of you know, some of you don't know, our next POCD is due in about three and a half years at this point. So, and normally it's a minimum of a two year process. So, in about a year, the town is going to be starting on the next POCD anyway. So this will just be essentially one chapter in the POCD. So again, there's nothing you need to do uh, at this point. We're just waiting to see whether we got the grant and then we'll proceed down one path or another. Hopefully it'll be fully paid for through the grant. Okay. So POCD, Plan of Conservation and Development, right? So. Correct. Okay, anybody have any questions for Eric on that one? Okay, that wraps up agenda item number seven, which is our old business. Uh, we have a couple items of new business here. The first one uh, is 8A, and I think the we have a little bit of discrepancy between our packet and the um, 
and the agenda that's uh, Amanda sent out, but we'll talk about that. But the, the agenda that Amanda sent out, um, well, this is gonna be a little tricky. So I don't know if she has it, but the, the first one is the Eastern Highlands Health District uh, funding request. Eric, can you address that? Sure. So you got a letter in your packet. Basically, what happened is um, we all know COVID was a thing last year. Um, Eastern Highlands Health District, all total, gave out something like 27,000 vaccinations. Um, and I forget the total number of clinics they held, but it was, they held an amazing number of clinics. Now, um, including some traveling clinics. Now, one of the facilities that they used was the Mansfield Community Center room. And uh, the Mansfield Community Center had asked to get reimbursed um, for the cost of the use of their facility, which the board of the Eastern Highlands Health District, of which I'm one member, felt that was appropriate to ask the towns to contribute because Mansfield turned over some, a little over $100,000 of its COVID relief money directly to the Eastern Highlands Health District for this. So Mansfield kicked in over 100,000. None of the other towns have given any supplemental money. So what it comes down to in Andover's part is about a $1,200 request from our ARP funding to rebate the money that they owe Mansfield. Um, and everybody kind of felt since Mansfield already kicked in over 100,000 in their funding, that it was reasonable to expect them to be rebated the 20,000 in expense for the use of the room um, and facilities. So that's what that is. The Board of Selectmen has motioned to uh, authorize that, but I thought it was appropriate that the Board of Finance at least be aware of it, um, you know, to see whether you had any commentary on it. Copy, okay, thanks. Um, I think I understand that. Any questions for Eric on that? Concerns? It seems appropriate. And money-wise, that would qualify for those American relief funds. That's yeah, it. it's very definitely an approvable expense. Right. Um, so I don't think there's any issue with that. We need a motion. Uh, do we need a motion here, Eric? I don't think you need a motion because the Board of Selectmen has all already authorized that. I think now that the funding, we actually have the funding, Sherry, after the board's motion is, you know, can spend that. I'm just providing it to you because that will be the first thing we've spent out of that pool of money. So out of the, you know, $478,000, now we have $477,000 left. Okay. It, uh, it does bring up an interesting question about the authorization of the expenditures of the funds in that uh, American Relief Act fund. I don't know if we have guidance from the federal government or the state or even our charter on how we would authorize approval of those funds since it, they're really external to our budget, right? Outside of our regular budget process. So I would agree that, that there may be a little bit of gray area and who does what with that funds. Um, I think generally speaking, it's probably, you know, if you look at the documentation, it is because it, it essentially falls under, uh, I forget what the, the, uh, the term of it is, but as far as I can tell, that's it's primarily a board of selectmen decision. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think any of this requires uh, because if you look at the charter, anytime you spend like more than 0.5 percent of the budget, not including the RAM budget, that's not already part of the budget and this is not part of the budget 
it requires a town meeting to authorize, but that's only for unexpended funds and fund balance. And since this isn't fund balance, I don't think that applies. Um, if you would like, I'll get a legal um, opinion from the town's attorney if that, you know, if, if you're interested, but I'm assuming it's primarily a board of selectmen responsibility. Input on the board of finance members on that issue. I mean, do you, is it worth having the town attorney examine it and render opinion? It's a lot of money. It's correct. It is a lot of money. I think the, the priorities of spending the money has to start with the board of selectmen. I mean, they have yeah, to set the priorities for the town and what the money should be spent on. Yeah. Got to start there. My main thing is just tracking it. <laughs> and then accounting wise, we have to have the paperwork and the, and the things and we probably should review it, I would think, just to make sure everybody's keeping the records properly. Yeah, I think it's just maybe what we do is uh, as part of our normal financial review, we just have a general uh, review of how that money is being spent. I mean, to me, I think- that's Like Town really Aid Road, you know, so have some kind of a ledger where we see the money coming in, the money going out, and what it's being spent on, do you know what I mean? So we can yeah, I'm guessing we'd probably get that anyway. I mean, Eric has included this first, you know, anticipated expenditure, it makes sense to me. Any other thoughts? I feel the same way Diane does, just as long as we have a, a accountability of what's spent, how it's spent. I think that uh, yeah. is all we need. Yeah. I do believe one of the things that should happen at some point is that there should be a meeting of the minds between the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and CIP. And out of it should come a very clear, easy to follow flow chart of who authorizes what and when, you know, for capital purchases such as this. Because it's not really necessarily clear to me um, whose authority it is to prove, you know, and there are times when I just kind of approve it on my authority and other times it goes through Board of Selectmen, CIP and Board of Finance and you all approve it. And I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily know exactly always who should be approving something. And I don't really want to overstep my boundaries. Um, but then again, I don't want to, you know, have to get approval by more commissions than I need to, to get something done. Um, right. And I, I don't think that's explicitly called out by the charter in any particular way about capital expenditures. We probably need to have a clear policy on it. Uh, so I, I would be in agreement with that. Yep. Mark, yeah, Mark, I kind of agree with you on that. Where it, it's not really something in our town budget, we're actually refunding another town. So, how would they look at that with the um, that grant that we got? I'm just not sure whether the, the specific oh, it's going to Eastern Highlands, right? Right, it, it's a payment right. to Eastern Highlands Health District. Right which is our health district, you know, health district coverage. So oh, okay. I think there's, there's no question that's an applicable, yeah. um, you know, use of that money. Okay. You've used them before, in other words. Uh, yeah, they are our health district. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, so just to circle back to what Eric proposed, and this is really kind of another topic, and maybe we need to literally have it, should, I think we should consider a committee for this as much as that makes me cringe a little bit to add a committee, but um, the, the, what the what the charter says is the Board of Finance shall establish in consultation with the CIP and the Board of Selectmen shall establish and maintain written purchasing procedures and policies, which include uh, timelines and procedures for submission of capital equipment purchase requests. So, you know, that's, that probably just follows under that procedures type thing. And, and if it's, it's not clear in such procedures and uh, I'm sure it probably isn't, then we probably need to revisit that. So that's food for thought. I don't think we need to address it tonight, but uh, that's, that's something we just, I think we need to do a better job of in general. So 
it's a timely discussion from that standpoint. Okay, any other questions on this particular funding? Oh, okay. Um, so the next agenda item, it's a little bit confusing because in the packet, it's, it looks like it got, it got missed, but in the actual agenda that was posted on the town website, we do have the RAM field installation. And in our packet, we do have a, I think a letter uh, feasibility study. Okay, so that isn't, I think the letter was actually an email that got submitted. So I don't know, Erica, if you or Sherry want to comment. Just information, right? Because that's got to go to referendum and everything. Correct. So, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, there's yes. no vote to be done on this. Thing. Right. Right. So um, the RAM Board of Education voted at one of their meetings to send this to referendum in November of this year. Um, and they have the right to send that to referendum. They have are supposedly preparing some letters and additional documentation. Um, their intention is to do some public uh, meetings. Um, and uh, they have asked uh, the boards of selectmen of the three representative towns whether the boards would like them to present to the boards of selectmen. If you so chose, I would tell them that they could, they could present to your next board of finance meeting um, if you so chose in August. I just got that letter today, so I sent it to the board of selectmen because that's who it was addressed to. Um, but if you want them to appear at a board of finance meeting, I don't know whether the Board of Selectmen is going to want to have them at the next Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, we do a combined meeting for that. I mean, both people should probably put it this way. Us paying $70,000 for 10 years is a big hit. So oh. I, I told them I thought it would be a non-starter in the town of Andover right. um, and that it was going to generate a lot of negative commentary. Right. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't, I'm just the administrator. So me telling them that is kind of irrelevant. You know, if you want to harden them up, send them a letter from the board of finance, tell them to pound sand. Um, you know, that's your, your board, your prerogative, if you, if you choose to do that. Um, but that's not for me to sign. That's for you guys. My only curiosity is, I don't know how when it goes to referendum with the three towns, does it have to pass in all three towns or is it just grouped together as a total? So oh, the, like the board of ed budget, right? So, so we could uh, all yeah. go and still we get could, we could loot We could completely vote it down here and it could pass, yeah. Right. But I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, in we a lot of people and myself and, you know, Eric's made this point, um, we, we there wasn't a lot of representation at the board the RAM board of ed meetings we probably didn't have as much uh voter turnout as as we like so there's still an opportunity to impact this if people were aware enough of it and were willing to go out and vote that's going to be the kicker right so um this is is this referendum going to be held in, in the normal voting cycle then november public eric yeah so so Is maybe, you know, maybe that's an opportunity and you get a better turnout, but that's going to be true in all three towns. So if you feel strongly enough, you need to make sure they go out and vote for this. One way it, maybe it's worth trying to have them come present it in a larger public forum, uh, collective meeting, board of finance, board of selectmen, yeah, try to get some people to come. After what we're going through with the budget now, I mean, I think the residents need to hear that they yeah. want a good chunk of money from us. We just zeroed out our budgets. Right. <laughs> I mean, we just did that. Yeah. All right. And yes. now there's, you know, this comes down the pike. Yeah, I fully, I fully agree that we need to, we, it would be good to have some kind of presentation and hearing. Um, it, it should be available online and as well as possibly in person. Um, you know, I, I think that having the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance members available to ask questions is, is a good idea. Uh, the real audience for this needs to be the voters, um, kind of my, yeah. and the taxpayers. And, they, and if they have to do it with a Zoom meeting, at least they get the information direct, you know, make them work for their money. <laughs> 
you know? Well, yeah, I mean, those, those the ladies, if you work for the votes, one way or the other, right? So. Yeah. Okay, so I just got, this came in this afternoon, but I'll read you what it says. We will likely host virtual information meetings on August 16th and 19th. Um, I would like to offer you the opportunity to have RAM board members attend any upcoming board of selectmen meetings to review the project and answer any questions. Um, but I'm sure they would entertain a combined meeting or a board of finance meeting if you requested that of them. Just for reference, that's a Monday and a Thursday, the 16th and the 19th. Uh, personally, I would also suggest that they need to hold informational sessions closer to the time of the vote. I mean, that's three months in advance. So. And everybody's on vacation. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. 19. But, you know, so that may be a request that we make. I don't know that. Um, Let, you know, let's have something in October, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> it came up really quickly, really quickly, and then right after the vote, and we had such a hard time with the vote. It just seems awful to have to ask the public. You know, I, for one, attended a lot of the RAM meetings, and it really, there's no opposition at all. I was the one person I think I told you guys at some of your meetings that spoke up, yeah. you know, and I, it was hard to do it, but I did it because they just, it goes right over their head. And I know that this is viewable, but um, for such a big commitment, such a big dollar amount when our own town needs so much work and bonding, I mean, it just needs a little time. You know, I, as soon as um, Amanda sent it out and I looked at it, I was glad that they had the breakdowns and everything so that we could look at the cost. But I mean, when you look at some of the things, site improvements, 227,000, changing the scoreboard. I mean, I get when you're redesigning a field, no one's a bigger sports fan than I am, but it's just, like you said, it is droning up our, the people to support, oops, Three and a half million dollars. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard. We just got through the budget season. And if we're going to have people, it's, it's not that this can't be thought out. I'm sure there's a need. They're going to have their whole town there. They're going to have everybody that supports it. So like you said, Diane, the votes, it's in Mark, it's, it's going to be the votes and the pending. So. Guaranteed, it'll be over $4 million when you're done with it. Cause mm -hmm. there will be cost. Well, over. Yeah. But what I would, what, I, what I'm going to suggest, and, and you know, we think we can think about this, but what I'm going to suggest is, first of all, I know Paul is on, but they probably haven't had a chance to really digest this. You know, we let the Board of Selectmen also um, digest this and consider. You know, my, my personal feeling is that we should encourage the uh, voters to review those, one of those public set meetings. Uh, maybe we can we attend if we can. Uh, but I would suggest that we, in, car, in concert with the Board of Selectmen, have our own, we, you know, hopefully with the RAM folks in attendance, you know, have our own review of this prior, you know, it kind of forced the issue uh, in the month or so, you know, the weeks prior to the, to the election um, or to the referendum and actually, you know, just suggest that we, we have a, a, a separate information session to make sure that people are well informed and have got the most up-to-date information. Yeah, um, and just uh, just are aware that this really important thing is coming up in an off year where nobody's really thinking about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's this huge amount of money that, you know, in the past, you get 50 voters to show up. So we need to right. do better than that. Yeah. Well, and I think as a board, you guys all need to make a decision where you're at on this, um, because in a sense, you do represent the finances of the town. So you probably should, as a board, make a decision whether you're going to back it or whether you're going to oppose it. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's fair. Um, I don't think we're in a position to do that now. I think we should wait until these public information sessions have been held, so possibly at the next uh next board meeting we have that as an agenda item it'll we've got it under new business now it'll fall under old business uh, at the next meeting so does that sound appropriate to you guys excuse yeah. me can can i just mention if we're having 
the auditor come to the next meeting for a presentation? Do we want Ram coming? Is that going to make for a super no, long meeting? No. Or yeah, I think no. I don't. I don't necessarily want them at a board of finance meeting. I'd rather have them, you know, at some type of combined meeting. Or I think where you know the board of selectmen meeting is more likely to have some attendance to it. I, I think we should. Okay. We should, we should put as much behind that as we can. That's my personal thinking. Eric, have you had any any discussion with uh, with Hebron or Marlboro on this? The uh, the town manager and the first selectman in Marlboro. I have Since this came not. out, that that may help too because uh, you know if you if you recall, I mean both both Hebron and Marlboro were 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 wrestling with budgets, you know, not as bad as us, but uh, uh, you know during a budget season also. And uh, I'd like to get the get the feeling, you know. Uh, beforehand of of where where they're at because they it takes one one like like it, it, if they, all the Hebron voters turn out and, and they they could pass this thing by themselves and the Andover and Marlboro can turn it down and if you look this is this has been going on for a long time and they've actually added to their wish list of uh, of athletic field improvements and uh, it I, it's really bad timing for everybody as far as I'm concerned you know. The year we're not, you know, we're, we're not even sure we're over with COVID yet, believe it or not. And here they are looking for right now, it's, it's gonna be well over four million when they're done, no doubt about it. Because historically, they have not done a good job managing any project over there, exactly. They, they're, they're still repairing the school, right? You know, from everything that fall, fell apart on that 75 million dollar school they got, so um. It's is uh it's 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 it's. Ludicrous. I mean, they're timing it really because don't isn't there last bond payment in this budget cycle? So they're timing it to yeah yeah to spend that money, enrolling a new bond payment, right? Just as we thought we were out, they dragged us back in. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, if you recall, there was a there was a big issue with the uh, the synthetic turf uh, system for the fields. One million. Oh, nice. one, right. One million forty-four thousand dollars, and that's tucked right in there. Nice, as number two. I'm sure it's priority. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Now, they, 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 the the way our our reverse back to the last heavy heavy water we got, um, what what kept the field together down here in Long Hill, as far as I'm concerned. I was sitting there talking with Scott Persano, uh, watching the water flow over everything. And I recall, you know, that when it was when there were ball fields, everything washed down the Hop River. Well, that there our grass field down there that we spent a lot of money on, uh, that 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 saved the day because that that field, uh, you know, the, the minor, the, I, I feel it's minor the uh, you know the costs of uh, of fixing what what happened there. Um, that grass that grass field uh, held up very very well. So, I don't, that's just my my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to agree, you know, piggyback on what Mark said is that what we want here is the maximum amount of public engagement. Oh, so but, having them show up at a random board of finance meeting in August makes no sense to me. No. Yeah, I, I do think Eric's probably right, though, that if we feel strongly about it as a board, uh, we should provide some a recommendation that which, you know, in and of itself, hopefully will garner some interest and maybe media coverage, et cetera, that, that can then be kind of a launching point. And I'm sure the board of selectmen will feel likewise. I'm guessing. Yeah. But... I think we, we just, we just reach out to the board of selectmen and let them know our feelings, you know, tonight yeah. and, uh, and, and see which way they want to go. Oh, Paul is on. So she's got it firsthand. She's paying right. attention. So. Okay, good. Well. So I'm assuming those meetings on the 16th and 19th are going to be Zoom meetings probably, right? I don't think they're going to be in person. Good question. Do you know, Eric? I don't have any information. Because well, they have been doing everything with Zoom. So. Yes, they have. Yes, so they have. We can listen to that and then probably pick it up at the next meeting. For all the downsides, it certainly makes it much more accessible and puts the meeting right. recording available for everybody. So, right. Yeah. I think it's important to hear why they think they need it. You know, I want to get the facts of, I, and I was wondering if you guys have faced this every year. I mean, I feel like I've been hearing a lot of field things like, um, you know, so maybe it's been a little bit here, a little bit there, and now they're going for this big improvement. But I think it's good if we all educate ourselves as to why they want it now. You know? Yeah, and it's also important to ask them, ask them pointed questions and make them answer them. Yeah. You, know, um, you know, what's the counterfactual? 
You don't do this. Okay. I don't care why they Maybe want it. Why it's a good investment. No, why we, you, you know. I want to be informed too. I mean, I don't want to always come in saying no. Like, I feel like I know a lot of things when I say things about school budgets. I don't know. I mean, I've been hearing about the fields. I know about fields, but why now? Why does it have to be this big improvement? Yeah. I feel like they've been taking money every year and doing things. Why hasn't it right. worked? Oh, why now? Right. And, and, and that's bigger. part of their argument. And that's what we need to tease out is that right. it's not working this way. We have to shift gears and do a turf field. And I want to hear more about that. Like why? Me too. Me too. Yeah. So. And they had the one meeting that I went to when they were deciding how they were going to hit all the towns with the um, the capital projects because they have their two budgets. So there were huge amounts of money that they had then, and they were going to do a little bit here, voted into a meeting here, and they they ended up doing it. It is it is in their budget. You know, like you said, there wasn't a lot of people voting no to that budget. It passed pretty handily surprising you know even you know i i'm shocked at our town doesn't represent better but they had some pockets of money that maybe they could have used then if they really needed some of these things that are itemized and they refuse to they they have other projects so we're not only funding that up to the tune of the five million or whatever and overpays now we get hit with this while everybody's on vacation like let's slide it in. So I like your thoughts of moving it along. So we're not past the COVID issues yet. This, this school year is still going to be tough going into this next school year with all the variants out there. And right. Fair enough. Okay. So, so I, I think that we can discuss this as uh, as a board on our next meeting as a as an old business item. And I don't I think we're in agreement. It sounds like that we don't need a presentation. Uh, but that we would expect to maybe work with the Board of Selectmen to to have some type of presentation focused on Andover and Andover voters if we can swing that maybe a little closer to the referendum time. Uh, but we can talk about it next week. Okay. Next month. Next month, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You're killing me, Mark. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> getting into this now. We're getting all excited. I mean, what's going on here? All right. Um, Okay, uh, if there's nothing else on that, then we'll, uh, we'll treat it next, uh, next meeting. Uh, the next item under new business is 8C, which is discuss funding for the 175th anniversary committee. They're looking for $500. We have Ms. Paula King as a guest speaker here today. So the chair recognizes Paula. Paula, you wanted to talk to this? Yes. Sorry, I just just got in the house here, so I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi all. Thanks for adding this to the agenda. Um, I am asking for some funding for the 175th anniversary committee. I'm going to be their new liaison, and they are asking for a bank account that they can um, have their names on that they have access to. They're asking for a minimal about, amount of money, about $500. They have a lot of, um, they're, they're very ambitious and I love their planning. They're, they're gonna be selling cookbooks and hats and pens and car magnets and things like that. So in order to get that off the ground, they need a bank account and um, some money so that they can kind of get these things rolling. And then from there, the sales of, of those items are gonna be um, self-sufficient. So this is kind of seed money? In that Pardon? Sense? This is just kind of seed money for that account to get that yeah. off and then you'll expect other funds coming into. We're not just setting up another checking account for $500 to be expended. Okay. No, no. If they're, they're looking for an account that they, you know, when they have to pay for, uh, you know, pay these vendors to get things rolling for, you know, their cookbooks and things that they're going to be um, selling to the public. So they need something to you know, to get started with so that they can get things off the ground. And then they were, they were hoping to, um, and forgive me if, if I'm ignorant about how these um, accounts work, they were hoping that they, they would have the ability to go in and write checks and, you know, deposit stuff and, and do things on their own. Um, I, I had a look, I had a conversation with Eric about this 
Um, I had a conversation with Sherry about this because I wanted her to, you know, kind of talk to the auditor to see how how that would go. Um, and Sherry, I left you a message. I don't know if if you talked to the auditor on Monday just to see if that was something that that would concern them. Now I got your message. Um, the auditor, unfortunately, just came back from vacation. So I wasn't able to get to him, but today he was at the Board of Ed doing the preliminary audit and tomorrow he'll be at the town. That was my first order of business to ask him questions about this account. And as soon as I get an answer from him tomorrow, I was going to reach out to you and let you know the information. But that's sure. the thing I could um, get this addressed um, because he's willing to you know, take my questions and discuss these things tomorrow morning. So sure. I should have an answer by tomorrow morning. Okay. What, what, are, you, what, are, your, what are your thoughts, Sherry? Is this something that-, that My thought that is be that it'll be perfectly fine. You just have to have a good accounting uh, of the money, checks and balances and receipts and deposits and- how would how would that happen possibly because you know somebody would need to keep track of that i mean is that something i'm sure you would reconcile with a member of the committee every month i mean who somebody's going to be like the treasurer yeah somebody and, like that and how um, is the account going to be titled because then a person who may not be a well, these are the kind of questions that i have for the right. auditor may and not be authorized to access funds. Who's going to be responsible for these kind of things? Right. Right. And yeah, so that's why I'm going to have that conversation tomorrow morning, first thing. And fundraise month in that account as well? What's or are that? they just going to ask, I, I ask you, are they going to fundraise and put money in that account, take donations in? Yes. That's what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. All right. So, and the ladies who are, are representing this committee, um, very, very detailed ladies, uh, Kathy Palazzi, Catherine Lewis, um, Linda Armstrong, uh, Mary and Ella Chalfant, Sue Slater. I know all these ladies very personally. I've worked with them with PTA stuff and town things. So they're very detailed with uh, and very organized with keeping records and and they'll they'll do their best i i have no doubt that they're gonna you know reconcile and do what they need to do um from their standpoint with the town so um i if if i didn't feel comfortable with um the ladies or or gentlemen or whoever was in this committee i wouldn't have come to you for you know to ask this request but i'm totally confident that they're going to keep records and and be very um diligent about working on the, the account, so. Yeah, so I think I think it just kind of lends, I think Sherry's right, we get the auditor's input on it and it just lends itself to following a set of procedures that are defined and to- I think it's how the account's gonna be titled, who's gonna be the owner of the account. Right. Who's gonna make your decision. Right, that's yeah. one of my questions. That's definitely- I mean, I'm still so sort of trying to figure out how Sherry isn't have to be involved in every transaction. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> some point it's got to be recorded, I know, right? I don't want it. If it was the Andover Hundred Fundraising Association, you know, that was my, just my hope is that they can record their transactions, and when the bank statements come in, I act like a quasi auditor and audit the bank statement and double check all the transactions throughout the month and balance it and make sure it looks but you're going to go to a bank and the bank's going to ask for documents for the title to the account so it's either I understand, to... but that's that's <laughs> like i said diane that's my first question for the auditor okay and then after that all these other questions are going to fall into place and i hope to get all these answers tomorrow okay and we'll take it from there Okay. What do you what do you need from us, uh, Paula? Um, Motion five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. right, right. Just you know, your your approval that you <laughs> a, a motion uh, pending approval. <laughs> right, I don't think I'll find five hundred dollars. are pretty lean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough 
extra five hundred dollars after we balance the books for the year. Uh, I'm not sure we can take action until we hear back about the auditor's comment. All right, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, we can't do anything. Kind of what I was asking. asking. Yeah. yeah. Just... Yeah, the time the timing of this is unfortunate. Um, you know, he was on he was on vacation, so I was hoping right. that everything right. would fall into place. So I don't know if if you can make a motion and say uh, hinging upon you know the auditor feels comfortable or I you know however you want to handle it. If if it's got to be um, discussed at next month's meeting, then it, it needs to be discussed at next month's meeting. So. Um, but you know, it's just unfortunate he was out of town. It just didn't work out that way. So, is there some urgency behind this? Are they just urgent. He kind of eager to get going. Um, they're eager. They've been. They they don't meet every month. Um, I believe they had a meeting this month. So they just they want to get the ball rolling because, as we know, we love our town. We love um, you know everything that goes on. But it just sometimes. We hit some roadblocks and just takes things longer. So they're they're hoping that by the fall they can have some of um, some of these answers so they can start getting going on um, their cookbook and these other items that they're looking to print. So, so uh, I'm okay with waiting until next next month after we get some opinion from the auditor. The other another option I think would be that we could vote to authorize the funding and separate checking account uh, dependent upon, you know, uh, the committee following procedures established by Eric and Sherry, uh, you know, as the town administrator and town finance director. And, and you know, we could do it that way that, you know, if, if, if they, and obviously the town auditor expressing some level of comfort, although that's kind of Lucy Goosey, I'm not sure how we do that. <laughs> Eric, do you have any input on that or? We're gonna have You're meeting, Eric. They'll have an issue on the bank side. That's where you're gonna have an issue, so. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So, you know, Diane keeps pointing out the bank side. Um, the bank side, if it's gonna be a town just, account, it has to be a town authorized person, which would be Sherry would have to open the account. If it was just me, it's 500 bucks. I didn't, you know, right. It's not no, the dollar amount, it's the mechanics, you know? Exactly, and that's what I'm worried about here is that I don't want to make a mess when, I mean, maybe there's another way of doing it even. Um, but I... Hey, I really debit think card. I think debit this to that's the what next we should meeting. be doing. I really think August meeting, um, we need to take this back up and after the auditor has a chance to talk about it. Sherry, can it be run like a student activity account, like at the schools, how we have people that manage money, just like you're talking about. They keep all of the yeah, sure. receipts, make that, you know, as long as you have one authorized person, like you're all talking about, and then Sherry is the auditor of it, as far, I don't know, that's what they do for all the student activity accounts, where we have people that are responsible for money. I don't know, this is bigger, because it's the town, just my yeah. little. Well, that's a good point. It's in a student activity situation, you have building secretaries that handle yeah. a lot of it, like, and it could be a number of secretaries that handle it. So yeah. there's, um, we don't have staff like that, you know what I mean? So I want to do it as efficiently as possible. And I don't want to be, you know, run into the bank and, you know, no, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to have this discussion with him and see the best way to uh, set this up so that um, we can comfortably know what is going on in this uh, account and also to be as a treasurer to audit it in a proper way. And Eric, you started to raise your hand. Did you have an input? Yeah, I just wanted to say th this is not completely new territory for us anyway. I mean, we already essentially have a library board, which has its own checking account. Um, fire department. Of, fire and department. fire department. And we have a third small one for the senior activities fund, which we fund at a couple thousand dollars a year. Um, and they do the same thing. They 
you know, they get half the money in July. They have to bring us all their receipts from the first half of the year, uh, documenting all their expenses. They get the second half. At the end of the year, they give us the check register. So, you know, we've been doing this before. It's just one additional group that we're doing it for. The only difference is that, like, at least the senior activities group, they have their own checking account that's not through people's, not through our bank. We just cut them a check. This will be something that's a people's bank account in the town's name, but specific to that committee with essentially different signers. I would assume we'd probably have the same requirement for dual signatures on checks. And, uh, you know, since we have that, or you as a board have that as a, a policy, um, but it doesn't seem like it's something that it's not doable. It's just, we got to work it out. Yeah, it strikes me as doable. Has been sold to M and T Bank, so they're going to go through a conversion this year. <laughs> yep. Get ready for that. <laughs> All right. Any? I don't know. Does anybody want to make a motion? Do we want to, you know, table this so we hear back from the auditor about how it would work and Sherry and how it would work? Well, it sounds like if we, as long as we wrap this all up by August meeting, we would be okay. And then they could get running with it in September, right? Yeah. So, Either way. Yeah. Answers and we can make a motion next meeting. Yeah. Right? That's my gun on it, too, is, is get the auditor comment. I mean, it does stink that it's one day. Uh, but at the same time, if, if the goal is to get, hit the ground running in fall, we should be able to do that next meeting. Yeah, and any expenses could be reimbursed in that account if the committee so decides that somebody pre-expenses them some money, right? So they can reimburse them as long as documentation is there. There's some ways they could do some of that. Okay, so it sounds like I'm failing to hear a motion that we authorize this and the expectation is we'll get a little more information next meeting. Yes. Make sure it's okay. on the agenda and we'll do it. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. I think we'll, we'll do that. That's what it sounds like the consensus is. All right. Well, that takes us to item agenda item nine, which is the approval of the meeting minutes from Wednesday, June 23rd, uh, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Um, does anybody have any comments? Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from Wednesday, June 23rd, 21. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, Louise seconds. Any discussion? Okay, should we have a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention, that's me. I wasn't at the meeting, I'll abstain. Okay, the motion passes, thank you. Uh, agenda item 10 is liaison reports. Do we have any uh, reports from our committees? We already heard about the Senior Citizen Committee or Senior Center Committee uh, from or the function from, uh, from Diane. Does anybody have anything else? Um, apologies, the, the last couple CIP meetings I haven't been able to make. I, I volunteered for this thing and then this summer got crazy with uh, kid camps and stuff like that and I just haven't been able to make it work. So I've missed the last two CIP meetings. Uh, so Eric can probably fill you in if there's anything important. Okay. Nothing. The, the big debate has been the last CIP meeting did not have a quorum. So there was officially no meeting. Um, however, they did the, we did informally about what we were going to do with the library chimney. And I have enough information to go back to the original contractors and uh, request a, uh, a more specific set of uh, specifications for what they wanna do. The, the members that were there were pretty well in agreement that what we wanted was a complete teardown of the chimney, essentially from the roof line up, um, which was a little more extensive than, than what we had quoted. 
Um, so the, the goal will be to get those requoted and then, you know, I'm, I'm basically, as soon as they're all requoted, you know, we'll look at them and, and just go for it. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> all right, anything else from any other liaison committees? I don't know that we have any other than CIPC and the senior uh, center or community center, I should say. <laughs> Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to agenda item 11, which is board open discussion. Does anybody have anything else to bring before the board? We still have some uh, motions to make, I assume, on those uh, new accounts we have to set up. So, it, um, part of the software, right? But we talked about earlier, there were like three accounts we need to set up. Right? Yeah. So it would make sense to formally motion to set up a community connectivity fund, uh, a fund specifically for the American Rescue Plan, and a recreation fund. Those would be the three if, if you were amenable. Um, you know, Sherry's going to do it as part of the, the setup. But since technically only the Board of Finance can create funds, it would make sense for you to motion to allow those three funds to be created. Mm. And it would That's, make sense to do it at this meeting because Sherry's got work to do to get it set up for this right. fiscal year. Right. right. So we should do it now. Yeah. Unless anybody has any reason we shouldn't mm. do it. Obviously, the rescue fund money is a no-brainer. We, we have to have a fund to put that in. So that got to get that. Yeah. Um, I personally don't have any issue with the other two. So... Um, uh, unless there's something else, um, why don't we make, why don't we get a motion on the floor to just do that, um, as proposed, uh, do we need, I oh, Sherry, I assume you will create, you'll generate the numbers. Right. right. It'll be a new account number and with a fund assigned to it. Okay. So, because a lot of times we make a motion, we specify the number. There is no number. We're There's making no number yet. Um, so not yet. Right. Um, so, our three are um, the American Rescue Fund money. Yeah. Right. Uh, the Recreation, Commi Recreation, Recreation Committee. Yeah. And what was the third one? And the third one is the Community Connectivity Grant Fund. <laughs> it's bad, I tell you. <laughs> Make the motion, Rob. I'll say works <laughs> earlier that's in the that, day. That's that grant we're always trying to figure out what it covers, right? So. <laughs> Go for so, it. So, you know, uh, as stipulated, I would move that we create those three funds and task Sherry with appropriately setting them up in our accounting software. Second. Okay, Kurt seconds. Um, any discussion? Sounds reasonable to me. I, do, I hesitated on the recreation fund until Eric explained why it was there. It does make sense based on that. Um, so I'm, I'm good with that. I un understand and agree that that should be identified separately and, and used appropriately. So, any other discussion? Okay, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I think it's appropriate. Thank you, Rob, for uh, bringing that up. All right, any other further board discussion? I want to know how Kirk can sit outside and not have the mosquitoes carry him away. I was just going to say, I, I, I lost the, the, the sun went down and the mosquitoes are eating me alive right now at Andover Lake. Oh. They're pretty brutal right now. They're pretty brutal. <laughs> I can't walk down my driveway. It's just wooden. I can go oh. outside. They, they come from miles around to eat me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Hearing no further Board of Finance uh, business. Uh, discussion. We'll move on to agenda item number 12, which is public speak. Does anybody would like to contribute any public speak? Public comment? Okay, hearing none. Uh, agenda item 13 is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Kurt makes a motion to adjourn. It. Rob seconds. Any discussion? 
Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.